Well, would you date or make love to someone plus size? Yes. Have you? I have. How was it? I couldn't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. That's enough said. What? Enough said. I couldn't breathe. It was fun, actually. Would you date or make? My boy said I couldn't breathe. I ain't gonna lie. I have a. I have a. a I don't wanna say I have a fetish, right? But like, I have a fantasy. Now this fantasy may never. It's probably. It's. It will never come to pass because. My marriage, damn, my ring upstairs. But my marriage is going to last forever, okay? I know I sound like a simp saying that, but you know what I'm saying? You, you got to talk it into existence. But my fetish, bro, y'all going to laugh at me. I want to take down a BBW white woman. Y'all go ahead and judge me all y'all want, gang. But I, I want to take down a BBW white white lady, and and you know what I'm saying that that that's I don't know. Maybe I don't watch too much blues movies. That's my my cup of tea. When I used to watch the blues movies, like I watch uh low budget blues movies. Okay, I used to, I I like to watch low budget blues movies. Husband and wife, real couples, and yeah, that that's. I already know y'all laughing at me. Don't judge me. That's just my fantasy. Like you feel me? That's my that's my uh fantasy. I want to take down a, a BBW uh white lady. She gotta be older too. She gotta be about 40, 45. I shouldn't be talking like this because I'm married. But ain't nothing wrong with having sex with a big girl. I'm just letting y'all know right now. Some of these big girls be nasty. Um Lord have mercy. Is it fake? Do y'all think it's fake? Usually they say the thigh to, to cheeks ratio got to match. Um, in this situation, the thighs and the cheek ratio do match. But at the same token, you know, technology is a motherfucker. Maybe they figured out a way to make it look more authentic. I, I don't too like the BBLs, but Lord, have, have mercy. Cake factory work? Yeah, I mean, I don't see why not. What would be an absolute deal breaker? Nothing really. I mean, just going on a car, cruising around, that's fine with me. That's just me, honestly. Like, I don't mind. I don't need to be taken to an expensive place. Like, none of that matters to me. A real woman doesn't care about that. What I look for it's not money, it's loyalty and, you know, respect more than anything. But so many women now, in 2023, say $500 minimum. I always say this. There's men that are cheaters. There's men that look for specific things in women. Like, there's women like that as well. There's women that just are with certain men for money, for certain things. And, you know, that doesn't mean that every man or every woman is the same. You just got to find the right one. So... How much would you want a 25-year-old man to make? I mean, as long as he's working on himself, that's what matters. What's your age? <laughs> when I see interviews like that, it brings me to tears. It brings me to tears. It, it brings so much joy in my heart, man. It's, it's, some, it's good people out here. It's good women out here. I know a lot of y'all, I'll be reading the comments, a lot of y'all don't think that it's some good women out here. It is great women out here. I personally, personally, I feel as though social media and just the media in general is like brainwashing us. Like they are literally creating a divide between everybody. If it wasn't, a, if it's not a race divide, it's... A male and female divide. It's a sexual orientation divide. Like the media is literally just creating problems. I hope damn, you know it's messed up. The fact that all the videos I react to are like this. I might be part of that shit. I might be a part of the problem. Hmm. 
Self awareness is a mother. Testing out a new cup. Four, three, two, one. <gasps> what the f? Testing out a. Why would he do that? so stupid that was dumb like I felt that any one of y'all looking at the videos with, with nuts and a penis felt that and you know that hurt you know that hurt I don't know if any of y'all ever got kicked in the before, but that shit hurt, bro. You get that it move up in your stomach and it feel like you need to take a yeah. What's your age? 25. Yeah. Okay. Not a Yeah. Damn. Uh, Mexico. If I wanted to take you on a first date, would cheese Hold on, cuz. I'm gonna have to put this up for y'all to see. He spent 16 years in prison after being wrongly convicted of his accuser, a best-selling author, is now apologizing, saying she's truly sorry. But how do you undo such a life-altering mistake? Here's Les Trent. <laughs> Tears of joy as a man wrongly accused of is exonerated after spending 16 years in prison. Anthony Broadwater, now 61 years old, broke down in tears when he heard the judge throw out the conviction. Mr. Broadwater cannot get those 16 years back. His accuser was Alice Siebold, author of The Lovely Bones, which was made into a major movie starring Mark Wahlberg. It's gonna be okay. My dad knows I'm here. Her rape at age 18 took place when she was a college student in upstate New York, years before she became famous. Siebold says it happened here in this 76-acre park overlooking Syracuse University where she was a freshman. Months went by and there was no arrest. Then, one day, Alice Siebold was walking down this street and she says she came face to face with the man who attacked her. It was Anthony Broadwater. He was found guilty after Siebold took the stand and identified him as her rapist. The people that knew me... And Yo, y'all don't know. Y'all don't know. It's so easy for a black man to just get convicted. Y'all don't know how many black men are just recently getting out of prison after spending 20, 30 years behind bars for something that they did not do. Yo, 16 years. 16 years for something he ain't do. Y'all think she gonna do time for that? She not gonna do time for that, bro. My character, they know that wasn't me. Doubts about his guilt were raised when movie producer Timothy Mucciante started investigating the story as he prepared to make a movie based on Seabolt's memoir about the rape called Lucky. Anyone who reads the transcript of the trial and compares it to her book, there's quite a lot that's omitted that a, a reader would, would look at and say, you know, this doesn't add up. And she made like a book about that. Seabolt, now 58 years old, had nothing to say as she walked her dog in San Francisco where she lives. Anything to say to Anthony Broadwater? But on Tuesday, she issued a public apology to Broadwater in which she acknowledged he had been wrongly accused. I am sorry most of all for the fact that the life you could have led was unjustly robbed from you. And I know that no apology can change what happened to you and never will. What do you think of that apology? 
If it's sincerely from my heart, I can accept it. <laughs> Man, fuck out of here, bro. Yo. I don't think y'all understand, bro. 16 years is a long time. This man is 61 years old. My pops just visited me. My pops is 63. Who my pops was 16 years ago and who my pops is now, totally different person. Things that I used to be able to do with my pops 16 years ago, I can't do that now. That time that this man had, he spent that behind bars. I'm not gonna lie, I, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so angry right now. I am so angry right now. I don't want to say nothing that a quote unquote get me canceled, but at the same, in time, when are we gonna start holding these? Me? Responsible for that shit. I got a story like this, bro. I said, I got the video up on my channel, but I'll summarize it. Uh, I was in my, my dorm room, just having a party. Um, I'm playing the game. This chick come in my room. Oh, you coming to the party? Nah, I'm about to play the game. This is when Assassin's Creed had just fake came out. So this is like 2007. You coming to the party? I'm like, nah, I'm good. I'm chilling. They went to the party. Hours went by. Shorty came back. She drunk as hell, huh? Her homegirl coming. She get to lay on my bed. She come out, oh, New York, New York. You don't want none of this, New York? She try to kiss me, try to do all this weird shit, bro. Now, I have this one rule. If she drunk, I ain't doing it. If she drunk, I ain't doing it. I don't mess with drunk females, bro. And plus, I had a girlfriend at the time. I will say this, too. My wife now. I'm like, nah, I'm good. I ain't fucking with it. She's like, what? Really? This bitch got taking her clothes off, gang. She gets to taking her clothes off. My roommates was there. They came out. They was like, yo, what's going on? All right, she throws up. She got her clothes off. She throws up. And then instead of, like, leaving with her, her friend, she decides with her throw up and everything on her, her body to go jump on my bed. Her friend apologizes. She's like, yo, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know, like, why she, why she acting like this. I'm sorry. Now, mind you, she's kind of big, bro. So her friend couldn't, not big, but she's, like, kind of tall. So her friend couldn't, like, take her. She couldn't move her. Couldn't do shit. So this bitch passed out on my bed. She wakes up the next morning. She sees that, like, her pants was down. She in her panties and shit. And now she get on some, like, oh, yo, why I'm in my panties, yo? What y'all do? I don't know. Start going crazy, bro. If her friend didn't come downstairs, and if I didn't have the video on my phone of her acting fucking crazy, she probably would have went and took call them peoples on me. I might have been in his situation. Not even me by myself. Me and my roommates might have been in his situation, bro. So I'm, I apologize if, like, I'm, I'm not going to apologize for that shit. If you, if you see I get really emotional about this, I'm not going to apologize, bro. It's just that... It is so easy for men, especially black men, to get wrongfully accused and convicted of crimes like this. But like, how are Europeans supposed to act or react when Africans are pouring in from everywhere at the moment? They should accept them. They should just be like, oh, come, take our homes, take they our should jobs, accept take Africans. everything. Because when you guys came in mass to Africa... But that was so long ago. I don't, that was, even that was so long ago. Anymore. But your companies are still there, yeah. looting Africa. Perhaps. Neo-colonialism. Perhaps. You are still there, stealing our resources, mm. using our resources to develop your countries, and you don't want us to come here. You are asking how you should you guys react when well, you come here. Exactly. How are we supposed to, to react? Imagine a thief steals your television, your TV, mm. and you go to his house to, to watch a soccer game. How should mm. the thief react? Mm. Exactly. Just be quiet. Mm. Boy, he shut her ass up. Lord, he shut her ass up. I feel so sad. And y'all should feel sad too. When you realize that. Most of these countries that we even call superpowers or a lot of these countries that are so well developed are actually stealing from Africa. Africa is one of the, the continents with the richest natural resources.
And these folks are just stealing. They got our African brothers and sisters looking like 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 freaking leopards on 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 TV. They got them, them African babies with flies all in their nose and and acting like Africa is so underdeveloped. They don't never show you the good parts of Africa. They don't never show you the parts where it's successful black businessmen and successful engineers who are freaking creating cars that don't need gasoline but run on freaking water. They don't show you. They don't. They don't throw that. They don't throw that in your face. They don't throw that in your face. But she want to complain. <laughs> you got to be very... Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yo, it's a movie called Serafina. When you watch that movie, Serafina... And I, I, I employ even like my white viewers to go watch that movie, Serafina. Because Serafina is based on a true story, I believe. Freedom is coming tomorrow. Watch that movie. Think about, I want you to think about it this way, okay? I live in America. A lot of my friends are black Americans, African Americans. A lot of their ancestors were taken and bought here as slaves, right? Slavery got abolished. Now we free. We don't have no land. We don't have nothing. They decided that things are going to be segregated. Segregation. Okay, that's that's why we had Martin Luther King, um, Malcolm X. We we had the Civil Rights Movement because of segregation. But now, I want you to think about Africa. Think about South Africa because that's where Sarafina is based. How the hell did these folks go to these people country and decide that they're gonna have apartheid? Apartheid is basically the same as segregation. Imagine that. They come to your country and say, hey, you can't come over here because you're black. We need to check your IDs. You need to have a special pass to come over here. Think about that. That's like a motherfucker coming in your house. I'm going to use this type of analogy he used. That's like somebody coming into your house, moving into your guest room, and saying, hey, uh, listen, you need a pass to, to come inside this room. If you need to go to the kitchen, you got to go outside and come back in. You can't walk this way. In your own house. Now, I ain't going to lie. It's people doing that right now. They have squatter rights. But imagine that, bro. Hehehehe. <laughs> 